Self-building bridges are awesome. There's just something so satisfying about watching a redstone machine travel across a lava lake, leaving a perfectly formed bridge behind it. Now in the first video that I did on self-building basalt bridges, I did a decently fancy design. I mean, it was okay. It looked pretty nice. It had some kind of decoration on the sides. It was cool. You guys really liked it. But I definitely feel like I can take things a step further. I really, really want to just build up a super over-the-top fancy version that is going to be ridiculously complicated but end up looking really, really cool. So first I have to actually work out how I want this thing to look. Now, I kind of have this design in mind, which now looking at it, I'm a tiny bit terrified that I now have to reconstruct this making use of slime blocks and things. But if we look at it, look, we've got we've got light sources coming through. We're pretty well protected from ghasts because normally they're floating around somewhere up there. No ghasts can actually spawn in this area, which is a bonus. I mean, it seems like quite a cool tunnel. And now that I've dropped it down by one extra block, it's got a lot easier to build. And also, I think it looks a lot cooler. I mean, look at this from the outside. That's a nice design. So I guess now we actually have to build the thing. And the first thing that I have to do is kind of work out where these blocks are going to be coming from. So you can see I've laid out some basalt here. This is basically this laid out flat. So these three blocks here make up this wall. And then these two blocks make up these two blocks right here for the roof. And then in this section, we have a block that goes there, this block goes here, and then this block goes up at the top right there. So we have to fold these blocks basically upwards from down at the bottom here, up into these positions, making use of flying machines. I am very curious as to what's about to happen here. So if I update this observer, everything should kick into gear. We've got two sets of flying machines, one above the lava, one below the lava. And this machine actually works. This machine actually works. It's like a gigantic steamroller. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a hugely, hugely positive start. But there is something important that we have to do. We need to make sure that we cut out this block and cut out this block on each one of these things. So we kind of need to go across like this. And that will allow us to create that shape. And we need to do that on both sides. Because if we don't do that, then we're going to have a surplus of blocks and that's going to be a problem. Now, I'll be honest, I am not quite 100% certain how I'm going to do this just yet. I actually think, after being sat here for about 20 minutes, making zero progress, instead of doing the punctures, I think I can actually reduce the size of this thing and then just move the blocks around, maybe? I mean, I've got my fingers and my toes crossed right now. So if we are going to go down this path, then this would be the first logical step, okay? It's pushing the things down and pulling certain things up. All right. Okay. Okay. It's actually quite a good step. So then next up, I guess we pull each one of these upwards. Hang on a minute. Have I built this wrong? No, 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 that's exactly right. So I need to pull each one of those upwards. Yeah, because I can't fall into that gap. And then we move this one from back here. And that kind of creates this solid wall. All right. Now, at first, I thought this would look really bad because the lava is being taken up around it. But actually, now that I look at it, I think it looks way cooler. Like the fact that this kind of has like a lava dip going all next to it. I think it looks awesome. Trying to make this alternating system is proving to be a tiny bit difficult. So, as I say, I need to do intervals, and that means that on every other block that these pistons move, they need to pick up the block. Trying to find ways to do that is challenging. But I think with some honey block action and a little bit of wizardry, we might be onto something. I mean, honestly, this is a bit of a shot in the dark here. Oh, but that totally looks like that works. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I love it when things just work. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is a really, really smart little system that we've created here. Okay, we can use that multiple times throughout the circuit, so this is incredibly handy. This build is starting to look like a strange slime block and honey block stick figure. Now, I've been looking at this thing a little bit more, and I think it might actually be smart for me to pull this block right here all the way up to the top. Yeah, go all the way up to the top, and then this area here we can actually pull up in a full section and then just kind of punch it in. And then we only have to worry about these sections at the end, which are actually going to be quite simple. He says it's probably not going to be simple. To be fair, though, everything has actually gone quite smoothly so far. 
Like, so far, we actually haven't had any major hitches or anything that's been totally impossible. Anyway, I've now built up the circuit that is going to build up the roofs. And if this is working, this is going to be one of the most satisfying things in the world. You ready? Pull up, pull up, pull up. Push across. That's it. <laughs> I love watching these things work. Check this out. That is fantastic. The only thing that we do have to be slightly concerned about now is the fact that I cannot build any part of the flying machine now that will interact with this area here. So I can do no redstone in this space anymore because obviously those blocks are in the way and we don't want to crash into them. So that could potentially add some complexity into the machine. I guess we'll see if and how that affects us in a little bit. I really don't want to find out that actually this thing is impossible because of that sort of thing. Anyway, I'm now working on the system that is going to pull the blocks from this area here into the walls and it should be simple-ish. So I think that gets pushed across. That will then make... Huh. That doesn't need to be... Okay, so then we need this. And then this here, and that should create, yeah, that should create a too high basalt wall like this. And that is the correct height. My brain is firing on all cylinders, as you can see. I do, however, think that this piston setup right here should potentially do the trick. I mean, it seems like a lot, but yeah, that's what we have to do to get the blocks from out here into position. I've actually overachieved. I've overachieved my system. I've pushed these blocks one block too far in. But it's promising. Things are going well. I have a huge gigantic smile on my face. There's just something about block conveyor belts and especially blocks that are being formed out of the floor that weren't there before, like self-building stuff. All of those things combined just makes me so happy to be working on this redstone contraption. That is a little bit more like it, but this piston is actually a dud. So it needs to go on the end. Uh, this is not something that I'd realized. I've also put it in the wrong place. Huh, now it's left the piston behind. What were we doing with that system up at the front there that allowed that to work? Because that is so strange that it's working in one example and not in another. I think it could be the fact that the observer face is actually facing the piston. Let's see if we can do something with that. There it is. I think that's the key. Okay, it's out of order, it's the wrong order, but that is spot on. That is exactly what we need. Guys, we're on the home straight right now. <laughs> Seriously. All I have to do is take the blocks that are on this last layer right here. I need to get it to their next one another, which is actually going to be a little bit more tricky than I guess I was expecting, because I haven't actually pulled something along just yet in this build. So that will be interesting to see how I can do that. And then I need to move them from here all the way up to here. So they need to go from down there up to there. Lots of piston action happening. One hour later, we really haven't made much progress. And it's because of this. Getting the blocks to go from here to go to here. This. For some reason, I just can't make it work in my head. Now, let me quickly explain why it's confusing, because I'm sure some of you are just sat here thinking it seems really simple. So I have to pull up every other block like this. I then need to push those blocks along somehow. Now, I can't do this making use of pistons or sticky pistons dragging or anything like that because, well, it's a flying machine. They're just going to get pushed or pulled along the entire length of it. So instead, I have to drag them along making use of slime blocks and things. So then each one of these would make their way into this position like this but they'd have a slime block on top of them. I then need to detach that block from the slime block and to do that, I'm making use of a piston that is pushing it across like this. So that needs to fire, but it needs to fire every other block because otherwise everything is going to break. But then eventually that is going to pull the blocks like this. And then I need to pull those blocks up from there. So they're next to one another. And then from there, it's kind of simple. But the problem is, is that currently I'm having pretty serious issues with doing the every other piston pullers. For some reason, mine just aren't working. I can't make a work in design. Nothing I do with these downwards facing pistons is working. Nothing I do. Even if I replicate what I've got going on up at the top here. Another hour later, I am totally lost here. Because look, this circuit here is exactly the same as this circuit. They're both identical. Why is this circuit, this piston is working, and this circuit, the piston isn't? Why? Why? I'm not, I don't know. I've made some further adjustments. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Ah, oh, that's so good. So for some reason, it's to do with the the order of where the slime blocks are. 
originally I had the slime blocks on the other side, now I have them on this side. This actually functions, and it's doing the right thing. Yes. That may have taken two hours for me to reach that point, for me to be able to do that, but I don't even care, because now we are on the home straight. One hour later, this is huge news. I have been stressing out over this, okay, but this back section here, so now I can drag a block. Oh gosh, oh gosh. I can drag a block, and then I can push it. Yes, look at that, look at that, they're next to one another! We have got blocks next to one another! We've done it! Now it's plain sailing! Oh, that is such, such a huge, huge jump in progress. And it's a smart system too. I'm gonna be totally honest, I mean, I knew this machine was going to be decently big. I kind of wasn't expecting it to be quite this big though. There's, there's quite a lot going on here. And it's gone from looking like a stick figure to looking like an earwig. Do you know what an earwig is? So like one of those bugs with the pincers out the back. I've just thought that could be a really British name for it. I'm sure there's an actual name for it, but we call them earwigs because they, they go into your ears. Well, they don't, but that was always the fear. I'm sure all of you will let me know down in the comment section. Once again, I'm overachieving. I'm lifting my blocks far too high. I don't know why I always do this. But now, finally, it's all fully completed. Or at least, so I thought. I, I, I thought it was finally done. The build is finished. The build is all completed. It is now working and I think you can all sense a sentence coming inbound. I mean, I, I, think, I think you can all tell what I'm about to say. This might just be one of my favorite redstone contraptions I've ever made. And I know I keep saying that, okay, but it's because I keep building a bunch of cool stuff lately. I don't even know what the best angle to watch this is. Maybe here, I do quite like watching all the blocks move. I mean, look at this. Look at this, so here come the walls. Walls are now being pushed in. It's just so satisfying to watch. So now we basically have a roof, but the roof is the complicated part. The actual top of the roof is all gradually being constructed. So now the blocks are side by side. They're now being pulled upwards. And now here we go. They're being pushed into position. And there it is. Nether tunnel, all fully covered over. We have got ourselves some lighting from the sides, but for the most part, it's, it's protected from ghasts. And this is just a cool looking tunnel. This is just a really cool looking tunnel, and it's been built from nothing! This started as nothing! It started as just lava, the lava has been removed, and we now just have basalt. And just a, a, a fully protected tunnel. I'm so impressed. This is the coolest. I'm super proud of myself on this one. I honestly, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to build this, but we have managed to build it. And it looks nuts. Definitely, yeah, it's it's probably my favorite redstone contraption ever. <laughs> and I need to stop saying that, but I mean it this time, all right? I seriously mean it. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one. See ya. That's honestly, not only is it my favorite redstone contraption ever, it's also just one of the most fun redstone problems that I've had to solve in a long time. There was all sorts of unique problems that caused my, my brain to actually have to work really hard. It's fun. I love the redstone problem solving. I love it. God, I want to do more of that sort of stuff. I really do.